Well, welcome to Captain Dave's Sport Fishing YouTube channel. And this is another installment of... <coughs> Thanks for stopping by, folks. I'm all sweaty. It's probably 8 o'clock in the morning in Jacksonville, Florida. And it is already super, super hot. I was doing some uh, early morning bamboo behind me, doing some bamboo whacking, and carting it out to the front yard so the garbage guys can take it away. I got a lot of work to do prior to hurricane season, but I was thinking about doing another wolf tail, and being so hot right now in mid-July, I wanted to touch base on the fact that just because you're on vacation, you're visiting here, doesn't necessarily mean you're showing up at the best time. So what you're going to get is what you're going to get, which leads me to the wolf tail. This is the hottest time of year. The water temperature in the river is about 84, 85 degrees. Well, I still try to do it and do some near coastal type stuff, but just so you know, which leads me to the wolf tail, is transitional times of year. That's when the fishing is absolutely fantastic. And I eluded to this wolf tail in one of my prior videos, and I'll put it up right now. This dock right here, April 29, 2009. 10 pound trout. So, as I sit here sharpening up my old Mundial knife that I use for chopping stuff around here, I'm going to tell you about one of my greatest catches. Now, this was on a charter, and to me, as you may or may not know, speckled sea trout. Nothing to do with your trout. Everybody gets on my boat and I say, speckled sea trout, and they think I'm talking about trout. No, there is no trout in, ja in, in Florida. No, there's no freshwater trout in Florida. And they certainly don't swim in salt water. My best catch ever. And I mean, it was like, you know, it was like the military. It was by the numbers. At a transitional time of year, it was April 29th of 2009. So that makes it 10 years ago, and I'm still talking about it. I was on a charter trip with a regular customer that I've been taking for years. And we were trout tracking. It was a lot, seemed to be a lot easier to trout track back then. What it was is usually there's a time of year when those inlet speckled trout start getting a little hot, I guess you could say. And the water is warming. And the bait is migrating downriver. And I say downriver because the St. John's River comes from the central part of the state. It doesn't come from anywhere. It's not coming from the mountain streams of Georgia or anything. It is a slow, lazy, go-nowhere river. And in around my area, it's all super tidal. I was out with just one guy, kind of the most perfect charter that nobody does. If you're serious about it, yeah, that's what you do, one or two people. All summer long, I get nothing but four, and they're really not that serious. It was April 29th, we were at the inlet. I was, we were float rig fishing along the jetty rocks, and we were catching nothing but small fish. So I said to him, all right, let's start stepping our way up in the river. The place that I alluded to in that video was one of our first stops inside the inlet along the Navy base where we're not really allowed to fish anymore because we're threats to the national security of the entire nation and the really crappy security that the United States Navy has. But we went along the Navy base and there was a pier there, broken down pier. 
I anchored up. It was the first of the incoming tide. I was sitting on the back of my, behind my console, eating a pack of crackers and drinking a bottle of water. And I told my guy on the boat, I said, one, two, three, four. See that fourth piling? I want you to take your float rig and drift it through between the fourth and fifth piling, that little bay right in there. And we were sitting there for quite a while, and he's drifting his float through, drifting his float through, doing float rig fishing. It's, you go out real natural, put your float standing up like this, just drifting in the current with a big, nice live shrimp below it, set it to proper depth, and you're drifting along. And he never got bit. And I'm like, I know that there's fish there. There has to be fish there. There usually is. This is a spot that certain times of the year, I literally, with a friend, caught a hundred speckled trout. Here it is, it's springtime. Everything should be going on. These fish are gonna start moving upriver. And I'm, I get done my bottled water and my pack of crackers, and I'm going, come on, I know there's gotta be one in there. And he turns to me and he says, well, if you think there's one in there, why don't you give it a try? And I went, okay. I took my float rig, I flipped it in the water with a live shrimp, exactly where he just drifted through, I don't know how many times, and my first drift, my float, right down. I take a reel, I come tight on it, it's a nice fish, real nice fish, a three pound speckled sea trout. We net it, boom, in the box. He says, try it again, and I went, okay. I put on a new shrimp and I drifted through the exact same spot. And what happened? My float goes down. I come tight. I take a reel on him. I get him in the net. It's a five pound speckled trout. Now, if you don't know anything about speckled sea trout, we call basically anywhere around the five pounder, we call him a gator. That's the fish you want. From five pounds and up, that's a really good fish. These fish don't grow to be 35 pounds. It is what it is. So a five pounder is a great fish. A three pounder is a great fish. Here it is, two drifts. I've got a three and I got a five already. He says, my gosh, you can't do no wrong. Go ahead, get in there again. I put on a new live shrimp. I drift through the exact same spot again. Float goes right down behind the piling. I take a reel, I come tight, and I know exactly what the story is right there. This fish comes up and starts wallering sort of on the surface. Hold your rod tip down immediately. You do not want that trout to break the surface. And I start easing him up. He starts ripping drag out. I ease him back. He starts ripping drag out. I know, like an old uh, Trevor Gowdy show. Trevor Gowdy had a show, a fishing show and a hunting show, I guess, which is old... Uh, Kurt Gowdy's son, who used to work for uh, NBC or ABC, Wild World of, World of Sports or something, back when I was a kid. And he had this show called The One. Well, I knew this was The One. I'm fighting, I'm fighting. My customer, he grabs the net, and he goes, Oh, my God. We scoop this trout up. This trout was 10 pounds. I'll put a picture up on the screen right now. That trout wasn't really long, but that trout was super duper fat. I did a uh, measurement on him and he was 30 inches and girth was 20 plus inches if I remember. 20 inch around. And that picture that I just showed you does not even do it justice because that fish was so fat. That fish was that big around. Well, that was my 10-pound trout, which is the most holy grail of all speckled sea trouts. They catch them a lot in Texas because they're trout. That's a trout state. Do they catch a lot of 10-pound trout in central Florida? Yes. In certain places, they certainly do. But that was my first one. I could almost smell that the trout 
were on this spot. So he didn't get a single bite, told me to go in there, give it a shot myself. And in three drifts of my float rig, I had a three, a five, and a ten. So what does that tell you? The old saying, sometimes holding your mouth right. And that's what it's all about. I went through the exact same place that he drifted. Exact same place. And my float went down three times. Well, the story goes, it was in the spring, like I said, it was April 29th. We no sooner got those fish into the cooler, took a few pictures, and it was very unfortunate that we just looked down the river from where we were, and literally a wall of black was coming to us, and it was solid rain like you know you don't see rain like this very often where it literally goes from light sunlight a little overcast a little partly cloudy to solid black we pulled the anchor and I ran back to the boat ramp which was only what, a half mile away from our location that we just caught these fish it was so bad that I ran past the boat ramp I couldn't even see the docks, it was so bad. And I knew I went too far, and I turned around, and then I got closer to the bank, and I saw the docks. We pulled up, and we took off and ran for the nearest shelter. That's how much we fished that day. There could have been more trout there, and I could have taken a whole lot more pictures, but I didn't have time. Many times have to pay, around here especially, you are going to pay dearly for any kind of catches like that and I had to pay with not a lot of photographs no video no other real proof of what that day was except for the guy on my boat and getting hit by the most atrocious rainstorm that I can really remember I mean it was that bad that is my probably greatest catch of all time and then of course I have customers that have caught great fish too, and that'll be another wolf tale, where we're going to talk about some of the greatest days that I believe customers on my boat ever had. All right, so thanks for watching. I'm going to get back to sharpening the old Mundial blade and cutting some of this big old bamboo behind me. So I'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. Don't forget, there'll be links in the video description below.